Hi, how are you? My name is Carmen Jones. You can call me Mrs. Jones. I was born and raised in this community. I went to Wayne Elementary, Wayne Intermediate, and Wayne High School. I did not graduate from Wayne High School. Actually, I dropped out in the ninth grade. So um, I know what it's like to make mistakes. Uh, some of you are wondering, how did I become a teacher then? Well, I went to school after I became a mother, and I eventually graduated from the University of Hawaii with a master's in education. I am also Google certified, and I'm highly, highly qualified to teach English and social studies. I have been teaching at Wine Intermediate School for 15 years, um, and I'm not here to tell you that I've seen everything. Actually, I love it so much here because no day is ever the same. And I know for a fact that there's a lot that you know that you can actually teach me. So that's why I enjoy my job so much. I'm currently in school now to get a certification. Um, so I also go to school in the evenings. Um, each year I never give up, give the same assignment twice or uh, just do the same lesson twice uh, because I never have the same students. Um, so I'm going to tailor each lesson to what you need once I get to know how you learn. Every year is different. I have six children uh, right now, and one of them is in high school. Everyone else is graduated. Some of them went to college. When I became a teacher, um, I was actually went to school to be a chef, but there was a two-year waiting list to get into the cooking school. Uh, and then after I got a taste of how much fun it is to be here, I, I promise you, I never want to leave. Um, my goal is to get to know all of you so well that you'll definitely invite me to your graduation. And one day, uh, I hope to actually have your children in my class. And I'm not old enough yet, but it's coming up. Um, I like that we're such a strong community. I like that hardly everyone leaves wine. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, some people think it's really not good to live in and grow up in the same community and never leave. I think it's great. And I think it's great that we're from a place that wants to be together for the rest of our lives. And I feel like if we get to know one another and we get to learn how to get along with each other this year, then for the rest of our lives, we can get along. Um, in my spare time, I watch a lot of series. I watch Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus, HBO Max. I have them all. It's, it's an addiction. And I go to the movies all the time. I do love stories. And I used to read a lot before I came, became a teacher. But dang, being an English teacher, I, I read a lot now but usually it's essays. So I haven't been reading much fiction. I've been watching fiction over the last few years. Uh, the show I'm watching right now is American Horror Story. The new season is out. I've watched all the seasons. I absolutely love those series because there's absolutely no character growth in any of the seasons. The characters live and die exactly as they started. And that's such a unique way to write. Uh, it's a, a very interesting style that's focused sincere, sincerely on the plot and not on character groups. I love it. Um, the only complaint I have when it comes to teaching is that, you know, English teachers have to read a lot. Math teachers, science teachers, PE teachers, my God, art teachers, they don't have to read essays. It's just not fair. But it's the job I chose because I, I like uh, actually love reading what you write. I like hearing your thoughts and hearing your explanations. Um, uh, how do I see the world? Why well, I see the world is where everyone has a place. Everyone has a talent. I don't think everyone has to go to college. I don't think everyone has to have a high school reading level. I don't think everyone has to be able to multiply integers in their head. It's just my job to get to you to see what you want to do in the future. Uh, what is your place in society? I think your generation is really exciting. The Generation Z, where you're creating your own jobs, you're creating your own opportunities. I feel like when I was young, we had the same 25 jobs to choose from. You could be a carpenter, a teacher, a painter, a mailman, a janitor. You know, there was just like 25 things you could choose from. But now, you, your generation, you guys are creating jobs no one has ever heard of. 
you can make a ton of money driving Uber Eats or driving for Lyft or selling clothes online or creating your podcast for fishing stories. I, I don't want to limit your options and tell you what to do with your life, but I want to help you see what's out there. And I want to show you that life can be great whether you decide to stay in Hawaii, move to the mainland, or even leave the country. It's just exciting to be young and free at this time, and I'm glad I get to experience it with you. When I was growing up, I didn't have a mentor. I was actually raised in foster care, and I went from home to home until I eventually ran away for good. Uh, And I feel like if I had a mentor, if I had someone who was pushing me to succeed, um, I would have probably done something else, something larger than teaching. I mean, not that I feel bad about it, but I swear to you, I would be working at SpaceX for sure, or I would be like the top chef at the top of Waikiki or something, you know? But I didn't have a mentor, and I I still am very satisfied with the way my life turned out, but I just, I sometimes imagine what life would be like if I had someone I could depend on for advice and to help me make decisions. So I just want you to know that I'm committed to staying at this school for the rest of my career. I'm not gonna change. I'm actually gonna be in the same classroom, F29, the same classroom I've been in 15 years. So you can come and visit. If you need a recommendation letter, you need a a resume reference, you need help writing a scholarship uh, letter, come back and I can help you, I'll be here. I could help you, I could be that one person that you need to make sure you have the assistance you need to succeed. Uh, when it comes to what do you, what can you expect in this class, I, I mean, I want you to know that I do take my job very seriously. I am the boss. It's what my ID says. If you look at your ID, it says you're my students. Um, and because I'm in charge of this class, there are times when I have to act like the boss. And the number one thing I'm in charge of is making sure that everyone is safe. I mean, you would think it was teaching, but actually it's not my number one job is to make sure everyone is safe, that this is a pain-free zone. And I never want to see people hurting each other. And I know it's very typical in uh, middle school to do like teasing each other, but if I see that happening, I, I'm going to put a stop to it. And I want you to know that if you see it happening and I don't see it happening, if you tell me, I will put a stop to it. Okay, that's... I I need everybody to feel safe here. Uh, And I need to know that any bullying of any kind will be stopped immediately. This should be the safest place you go to during the day. Um, That being said, I also have the ability to to create hundreds of rules or anything and everything. Or we can just have three rules. You know, the three rules of be safe, be respectable, and be responsible, our three school rules, are pretty good. Like, we could stick to those three rules. But if you look around, you'll see that you have options here, right? You see I have two couches. You see I have some bouncy chairs. You see I have some rolly chairs. Um, And these are all made to be for you to be comfortable in class. They're not to be abused. They're not to be broken. They're not to play, uh, you know, crash into each other with the chairs. They're here to make you comfortable. Um, Also in the classroom is a refrigerator and a microwave. I mean, go ahead and use them if you need to. But let me tell you, last year somebody stole my um, lunch out of the fridge, and guess what happened after that? Instead of having those three rules, be safe, be respectful, be responsible, now we had the four rules. No one was allowed in the fridge. And then guess what? Somebody microwaved something and blew it up in the microwave, and then they just left it there. So now we have five rules, right? The fifth rule, can you guess what it was? The fifth rule was no one can touch the microwave now. You see where I'm going with this? So right now we have three rules, and if we have to make more, we will. But I'm hoping that you're mature enough to just follow the be safe, be responsible, be respectful rules, but we shall see. Uh, This year we're gonna study four units, one each quarter, and all of them have to do with writing. This is a very writing intensive course. It's getting you ready for high school um, where you are required to be more independent. So I wanna give you a good foundation for writing. Unit one is a narrative, unit two is expository, unit three is argument, and unit four is literary analysis. And during each unit, we're going to read a lot. Okay, so we'll always start with reading, and we're always gonna start reading local things. 
Then we're going to move on to reading things from the mainland, right, from our country. And finally, we're going to start reading things from out of country. So I'm going to try my best to relate each unit to your life in Hawaii, to uh, your life as a country, uh, as a member of the United States, and as your, uh, your life in relation to the rest of the world. Um, and I want you to think hard about how each unit does connect to real life right even though we might be reading fictional stories I'm, I'm always going to ask how does this skill relate to real life uh, for example our first unit is narrative right I was so surprised when I started teaching that a lot of people or a lot of kids who grow up here don't know the myths and legends from why I am we have like the best myth and, myths and legends so uh, we'll, we're going to start with reading some myths and legends from Waianae. I mean, we look out the window, we see Mount Kaala. That's our first legend we're gonna read. We look out the window, we could see um, the beach, right? I have a, a few stories about Makoa Cave. I have, yeah, I hope you really like uh, the stories that I found about our city. Then we'll read some urban legends from around the country. And then finally, we'll end with some Greek myths. And hopefully you get some more stars under your belt and you can go home and teach your younger siblings or tell your friends and family members uh, just about this fun planet we live on. Um, after we read through a bunch of narratives, our main mission is to look at the patterns in the narratives. And then I'm going to ask you to write your own myth this quarter. Storytelling is such an important part of family life and uh, it's an important skill when you're trying to impress your friends with a story, right? Everybody loves a good storyteller. And I hope you like the stories I've chosen for this year. And if you have any suggestions uh, for stories you want to read together that you think are excellent, please, I'm all ears. Um, so let's begin by looking at what needs to be in a story. Uh, and then in order for it to be considered a myth, and we'll have, when we have our list of criteria, then we'll talk about myths that you may have heard. Thank you.